Hello everyone, welcome back to the class of C programming again. And uh, we are working on loops. And so far, we talk about uh, two kind of uh, loop statements in the C language. One it is the while statement, the other it is the for statement. And we covered both. And indeed, uh, we also said, uh, I hope you agree with me, uh, the while statement and for statement, they are interchangeable. And uh, if you really want to use uh, for only, uh, it is fine. And also if you want to use why only, uh, that will work too. Really, they are interchangeable. Uh, you can change a uh, uh, for structure, for statement to while, or you can change a while to a for. Uh, they are equivalent. And uh, either way, both. Uh, the for loop or the while loop, they require condition. And uh, so that's what the textbook meant. In order to make a, a loop, you always need to have a condition without a specific condition. And uh, either the loop will not uh, start or really it may not stop at all without a proper condition, okay? Uh, but anyway, there are situations it might be harder to establish a condition at all. And for example, if you want to calculate a sum, an accumulated sum, and uh, well, you really don't know how many values are there. You want to let the user keep on under the values, and then if there's an end, uh, say it might be 10, or might be 15, or could be the case the user may need to under 100, under 100 values. And then how do you know really uh, when the condition, uh, well, when it is the end of the condition? So in that case, what you can do here is uh, you try, you can create some artificial condi condition, or really use the language on the textbook, a sentinel controlled loops. A sentinel value, it is an end mark that follows the last item in a list of data. Sentinel value, sentinel control the loops. It is an artificial condition, somewhat. Okay, artificial variable. It is an end mark that follows the last item in a list of data. And uh, well, an uh, end mark, actually, indeed, uh, uh, there are several end marks in the C language. End of line, it is an end mark. And also, we have end of file. And indeed, actually, in this class, I'm trying not to cover. Uh, not to cover the topics of file operation in the C language, so we will not see. Uh, if the time, we'll see the end of file control the loops. Okay. But anyway, for now, let's just skip the discussion for file operations. At least I want you to know there were uh, end mark. It is end of line. End of line there. Okay. And then, uh, well, if we don't have those end marks, how do we design a sentinel control the loops? Okay, so this is the first of all, let's take a quick look what is this program it is about. Uh, this program really it is used to calculate the sum of a list of numbers, list of exam scores. And the issue is we really don't know uh, how many exam scores are there. So how do we make sure we do calculate all the sums together, all the sum, the sum for all scores together. So maybe let's read the program first, then I'll move back to the general approach, how to write, how to design, how to make a sentinel controlled, sentinel loop, sentinel value controlled loop. Okay. So in this case, first of all, we define a sentinel value, and this is the constant macro. And because on the, it's understandable, we are looking at test scores, exam scores. So I guess it's safe to assume all the test scores must be positive or at least zero. So the Sentinel value, it is set at a negative 99. Clearly, this is not an exam score we expect. Okay. And then what the program does here is yeah, certainly it doesn't have all everything. It is a, a program. It has a main function. Okay. Uh, basically, uh, the loop, we mostly we look at the loop structure. Okay. And we simply say if the loop, the score, the condition it is created 
to check if the score equals Sentinel or not. Because when the score it is typed in as the Sentinel negative 99, it is considered as the end of the import. The Sentinel value it is not the actual value. It is the end mark. It is an artificially created. It is an end mark we created. Okay. If it is already the end mark you got, and then you don't need to go through the loop at all. Uh, that is the issue. That is the that is the issue. That is the issue. Okay. So first, the program just read the import as a test score, and then if the test score it is not the sentinel, that means we are going to accumulate the sum, and then we do have the accumulator for the sum. Simply, it is declared as an integer with the initial value zero, and uh, because the score is not. This is the negation operator, right? Not equal, not equal. And then we add the score to the sum. We add the score to the sum. Add the score to the sum. Okay. And then also we want to prompt the user again and enter the next score. Enter the next score. And certainly if the user enters the negative 99, that indicates that's the end. That's the end. That's the end. So this is the body of the loop, and then that's the condition. And keep in mind that this time, the condition is uncertainly involved because we really don't know how many loops we need to consider. So we created an artificial condition. Uh, it's a sentinel value. It's a sentinel value. Because in, based on the observation of this program, this program, we are taking in exam scores. So certainly you don't expect the negative 99 as a test score. We simply set negative 99 as a test score, as a, a sentinel, and at the end of the import. And then we calculate the accumulated sum. And this is a typical example of sentinel controlled while loop. And indeed, you could change this while loop into, into four. Y and the four, they are equivalent exactly, believe it or not. They are just the equivalent. Okay. And then let's take a look at the design of Sentinel controller loop. Okay. Uh, first of all, if you want to calculate sum, still you initialize sum to zero. And then get to the first score. And then uh, while the test score is not the Sentinel, we add a score to the sum. Then continue to get to the next score. And then it moves back to step three again. And until the score turns out to be the sentinel, it will jump out to the next statement. So this is the design of sentinel controller loop. And especially it works very well. X works very well. If you well, if we don't know how many reputations there would be, okay, you use a sentinel value to control the loop. You use a sentinel value to control loop. And in general, the sentinel value cannot interfere with those actual data. And in this case, we are considering exam scores. Certainly negative 99 would work well. I would say even negative 1 would work. Any negative value would be a reasonable sentinel value. OK, sentinel value here. And uh, look at this program closely. And uh, I really want to see here is, uh, I mean, look at this program closely, OK? You look at those statements, those two statements. Print out. We understand that this is somewhat uh, to prompt the user what to expect from the computer. And print f, scan f, scan f into the import. These two are the same, right? And the somewhat, uh, well, I would say, uh, we mentioned it briefly, when you write a program, you really want to write a good program. So somewhat, uh, we feel you may have some thinking if there's a possible way. Uh, not to make a well repeat those two same statements, uh, two times well, well in in a single program like such. So indeed, uh, the answer is yes. And uh, we do have one more kind of loop. So far, we talk about uh, two kinds of loops. One it is the for, the other it is the while. 
And uh, if you ask me, uh, well, uh, which loop do I prefer between for and while? I say whenever I know the specific numbers of loops and the spaces of loops can be counted by one, two, three, either upward or backward, uh, I would say preferably I'd like to use the for statement. And also, uh, if, uh, well, I mean, uh, the loop is not directly the, with the, directly the condition for the loop, it is not directly the, based on number one, two, three, those kind of things, you may want to consider while. And again, for and the while, they are interchangeable. And there is one more loop statement which is do while. So before we move to the next part, still let's take a break. Thank you for watching.